We've got a couple of songs and a couple of bands in our database. And now we have to move towards creating this relationship between the bands and the songs. And how will we do that in our database? Before we do that, I want to focus in on a different relationship, which doesn't look like a relationship at all in this model. In our information model, we say that a song has a genre, and that's just one of the attributes of the song. But as it turns out, in, uh, in databases, we need to do something a little different in order to make sure that we can reuse the names of the, song, of the genres. So many different songs are going to have the same genre. Right? So we don't want to type the genre every time in each song separately as a piece of text because that's really prone to errors. Instead, we want to create a genre table that has all the names of the genres one time, and then we want to link the genre table into the song table. So this is a little bit more sophisticated than what you might do in Access, but this is the power of databases. So let's start there and see how we create a genre table and link that genre table to songs. Back over to Access. I want to create a new table, and as before, I'm going to go into Design View instead of Data Sheet View, and I'm going to call this Genres. And in our Genre table, everything will have a unique ID, and it turns out that most things inside of, um, inside of databases, most tables, have their unique ID so you can find stuff in the table. Okay, and I'm going to just call, say, Genres Have Names, and once again, it's going to, okay. Um, oh, not name, name. That's why it's complaining at me. Okay, so now that's it. My genre really only has an ID and a name, and that's the whole point of this genre table, is to have some place where I can type in all the names of my genres. So let's put in a couple of genres here. Save the table. My first genre is going to be called Indie. My second genre is going to be called Alt. Okay, and obviously in the real world, I'd have tons and tons and tons of genres. And now you start to see why I really should have a database for this, because I'm going to have millions of songs and millions of bands and millions of genres. And it really would just not do to keep it in anything besides a database, because the database is very good at storing and letting you retrieve those, uh, retrieve that information. So we have a very small database. It's only got a couple of things in it. Now I have a genre table, but this genre table is unlinked from the songs, right? I can't, there's no place over here in the song where I say what genre it is. So now I have to create that. So I'm gonna go back over to um, the genre table. Let me pull it up over here. And excuse me, the song table. And go back to the, um, the design view. And now I wanna add something that says genre. But now I know that I'm not just gonna make it text. I don't wanna just type the text in there, I actually want to hook it up. I want to link it to that genre table. So there's a special thing inside here I do, which is very cool, which is called uh, lookup. And we're going to do a lookup. And they give you a look, they call it lookup wizard because it steps you through the process of creating that linkage between um, uh, the genre table and the songs table. And later it's going to be between the songs table and the band table. Okay, so um, I want to look up the fields to get the values from another table or query. That's true. I could also choose this one where I type the values directly in, but I want to do it sort of the more official and um, uh, professional way by having my genres in a separate table. So now it says, okay, what table? The genres table. What do you want to bring over? What do you want to have linked? And it turns out I want to have both things linked, the ID and a name. And I'm skipping over a lot of stuff just to make this simple, but it is really simple in essence. And now it says, how would I like those ordered? Maybe I want to have them ordered by name alphabetically. So that's ascending and descending. So the A's, B's, C's in a list. And you'll see where that list comes up in a minute. minute. Okay, and here is, it, gives, it gives me a little preview. Yeah, that's what I want. That's the names, alternative and indie. And so I, now I say finish. And I save it. And now, okay, that looks like number. But you'll see it's very nice because when I go into this view, now I have a genre field, and when I click in the genre field, it gives me my two choices. Very nice. So uh, let's see. Um, Missy Higgins Steer is Indie, and King's Crossing is Alternative. Now I have Indian Alternative in there, but in fact, what's actually happening is I'm getting the Indian Alternative words out of the genre table. And notice when I have a drop down of all of these, I can't go wrong. I can't type in something wrong because I'm only soliciting I'm only selecting from a list of, um, of the available genres. Okay, so now what I've managed to do here is I've managed to 
finish off the song table. I have a genre over here. And now notice that my information model didn't really think of genre as a separate table because it wasn't appropriate at the level of the information model. But at the level of the database, it really is appropriate. So we have here the, the difference between the logical or the conceptual information model and the database model that implements the conceptual model. And in fact, in real life, what looks like one thing, one type in a model at this level can be literally dozens of different tables all interconnected to make the storage and retrieval efficient. It's not any different in terms of what the, of what the um, data model is, or excuse me, the information model is. Song still has a genre, just like it says here. But in order to make an efficient and effective system inside a relational database, we implement it using two tables and not one table. So that's kind of an important idea that conceptually uh, the, the model of a song can be very simple, but when you actually go to put it in a database, it could get very complicated because of a lot of things that um, require extra tables in order to be more efficient or more effective as a relational database. All right, so, so far we've created a relationship between uh, the, the, the type called song and one of its uh, attributes, the genre. Now let's go do the same thing and create a relationship between songs and bands. Well, as it turns out, I'm gonna go back into, uh, sorry, into design view. As it turns out, it's no different. The, this kind of relationship that I just made is gonna hold for bands as well. So I have a band and now I do the same idea here. I'm gonna say auto lookup, or excuse me, lookup wizard. And now I do, I wanna get my, my names from another, my values from another table. This time, instead of connecting the song table to the genre table, I'm going to connect the song table to the band table. And I'm going to say bands here instead. And now I want to take the ID and the name. I don't really need to take the picture. Um, by the way, the ID is what really makes the linkage. We, we use the ID from one table and the other table in order to really make the linkage. But what you want to see as a human being is you want to see the names. That's why I have both of these things in here. Okay, and let's have the band names I'm going alphabetically ascending by the band name. And it shows me, here's my two band names, Elliot Smith and Missy Higgins. I just happen to choose two bands that are also the names of people, but that doesn't matter. It could be the Beatles. It could be anything you want in there. Okay, so now I'm finished with that. I save my table. And now when I go to view the table again, now I have a place for band. And once again, I have this nice drop down. So Missy Higgins is Steer, and Elliot Smith is King's Crossing. There I have it. I've created the full database, and the full database has bands linked to genres. Let me go back over to, to um, here. It has all the stuff for the bands, all the stuff for the songs, and the relationship between songs and bands. Now let me show you one last thing, which is the, um, uh, which is the relationships. And here it, here's what it looks like as a schema. I've given you this concept of schema before. And here's what this looks like as a schema. I have the song table here. Song table is linked to the, genre, to the genre table. Song table is also linked to the band table. That's what these little lines mean. The band has all this information. The, the songs has all this information. So you can see how this is very closely related to our information model, right, this one. But it sort of uses a different way of expressing things. And it also has more complexity. And that's often going to be the case, that you can express the information model very simply but when you go to make a database model out of it, all of a sudden it turns really complicated. And that's one of the big values of making an information model because it keeps it simple. Anybody, you could explain, I would, I would claim, you could explain this diagram to anybody in just a couple of minutes. They would get it. They'd get the idea. But try to explain this diagram to them, especially when it's not three tables, but 30 tables or 40 tables, and all of a sudden people don't understand. That's really the value of an information model.